Item number, SCP-720, Containment Class, Euclid, Disruption Class, VLAM, Risk Class, Notice, Object Class, Electronic, Special Containment Procedures. Two copies of SCP-720 are held in separate storage devices. One is permitted to be used in authorized testing. The other serves as a backup copy. Once per year, an inspection is to be performed to ensure that the storage mediums have not decayed and are still readable. It is not permitted to run SCP-720 without written authorization. Agents embedded within the California Highway Patrol are to monitor the Thomas Kikadi cold case and seize any evidence recovered by that or any other authority. Description SCP-720 is an anomalous ICRDTA, or incremental code routed directly through arrays, a custom-built programming language that allows for the creation and execution of thaumaturgical computer programs, program playable on any computing system with read-only memory capabilities. SCP-720 contains a video game consistent with those produced on the video computer system. Players control a single character designated SCP-721, traversing through nine levels, corresponding to a childish rendition of Dante Alighieri's Circles of Hell, culminating in a final battle against a representation of Lucifer. SCP-721 is able to be equipped with a variety of different items, which can be equipped to SCP-720's head or legs, which are required to complete portions of the game. Note: Power-ups include legs, boots, and beanies. Occasionally, SCP-721, self-identifying itself as TK, attempts to communicate with the player or otherwise engages in behavior suggesting sapience. These are always one-sided, as SCP-720 is not compatible with audio signal inputs. SCP-721's vocalizations are stream-of-consciousness in nature and are theorized to reflect SCP-721's internal monologue. Discovery Following the seizure of GOI-78, or Arcadia, related machines from Holden's Arcade in South San Francisco, SCP-720 was found to be on an SD card, jammed in the coin slot of Sweat, a stand-up cross-country arcade simulator. Note: The location was closed due to 12 children being reported missing in the span of three months. It is theorized Holden's Arcade, along with two other locations in the city, were involved in nearly 40 child disappearances in the years of 1965 to 1967. Upon SCP-720 being brought near a transport vehicle's disk drive, its anomalous properties were discovered, and it was brought in for testing with an on-site laptop. Addendum 721. Supplemental Files. One week after bringing SCP-720 into initial containment, Site-28 received a printed scan of box art for SCP-720. No return address, fingerprints, or postmarks were present on the envelope. The identity of the sender is currently being determined. No gameplay manual was attached with this box art, though three photos of gameplay can be seen on the scan. None of the environments, a forest area titled Redwood, a cave titled Burial Ground, and an industrial area titled Hometown. The large dome-like structure in the back is referred to as the Roller Rink by SCP-721, or enemies shown in this scan were present in initial gameplay, instead only first manifesting during the fourth cycle of testing. Note: Rancors, or enemies, are amalgamations of scorpions, dogs, and rhinos in a state of necrosis, and GR-33-D, a robotic miniboss. GR-33-D's cries have been analyzed to be a combination of newborn children's wails and cash register noises. Also attached with the box art were two small scraps of paper, with notes written in a messy, hastily sketched font, and a newspaper clipping. Transcriptions are attached below. To get past it, Crown. 
Thorns slash not thorns. Gold wreath. Cannon. Copter head. Runners. Skaters. Lava boots. From the climber found in area E47. The frolicker's booties. New item? From who? Report hashtag must call precinct. T loves A. I miss you. I'm sorry I didn't get the chance to say goodbye. Or tell you how I feel. Or say sorry. That's the main thing. I am the king. He is not. Or am I? Who knows? Voice acting must be compelled. You're in over your head, Thomas. You're in over it. You're under it. You're in it. All around it. Ambulatory limb sapper hooked up successfully. Tep one complete. Need miniature hockey blades to beat Hushman. To be found in level three. Ice theme checks out. We'll model later. Plan it out. Remember to add it all prior to jump. Step two complete. Crafted. Sigil drawn. Transfiguration tested. We. Okay. With some breathing needed. 6x minus 23 equals 17, to 6x equals 40, to 3x equals 20, x equals 20 divided by 3 per location. Round to 6? Six. 6. Can't have two-thirds of one. Well, they left that much, so I guess you can. Well, it's done. Attached is the newspaper clipping. Light fading was present on the document, likely due to sun bleaching, age, or contact with an unknown liquid. San Francisco Foghorn. Your voice through it all. San Francisco. February 11th. 50 cents. No refunds. Where has Thomas Kikadi gone? Disappearance stuns families. Prosecution says trial outcome now uncertain. By Burton Spencer Guster. South San Francisco. The star witness of next month's child abduction trial, 23-year-old programmer Thomas Kikadi, has disappeared the day after abruptly resigning his programming job. Prosecutors were unable to reach him, and a wellness check on his apartment did not turn up any evidence as to where he may have gone. I'm saddened and frustrated, says the mother of six-year-old Jessica Holt, one of the abducted children. Honestly, more than that, I'm ashamed of the police for allowing this to have happened. Police Chief Stottlemyre said Kikadi's apartment had been under police protection after anonymous threats were made against the star witness's life. A spokesperson said that foul play has not yet been ruled out. An anonymous former co-worker claims that their former employer, the arcade where a majority of these abductions happened, had been putting Kikadi under pressure ever since his plans to testify had been made public. They pointed to the unsubstantiated reports that traces of cocaine were found in Kikadi's workspace. Despite Kikadi's negative results, a number of employees at Kikadi's former workplace have yet to undergo testing. Most notably, Null Addendum 720-2 Incident Logs Log 1 Begin Log Startup continues normally. However, the message of Flapper May Arcadia burn in hell, is absent, instead replaced with tibial junction levels low. SCP-721 responds to this change with a small text box, stating, Oh dear. The game starts up in Redwood as the first world, compared to the original, a beach-like level designed to function as a platforming tutorial. SCP-721 is equipped with a crown of thorns from the start despite not being able to acquire this beanie until the fourth level, Zertwa. Gameplay continues as normal, though no enemies are present, and SCP-721's speed is significantly reduced. SCP-721 successfully locates three keys necessary to progress to the next world, Zarathustra. This world is unchanged, and SCP-721 progresses and completes the level normally. Upon completion, however, SCP-721 is met with a small text box, shown to the right. Personnel responded with completing the game, upon which the text box closed, and the world map was shown. Rather than progressing to the third stage, Buccaneer, SCP-721, was put into a tube and slid down 
towards burial ground. SCP-721 was found to have two additional beanies and legs in its inventory, none of which were present in previous playthroughs. Upon defeating a King Rancor, similar to a typical Rancor but larger and had parts from small stuffed bears and coins embedded in it as well, SCP-721 returned to the normal world map. Prior to being allowed to move to the next level, Hometown, SCP-721 and personnel were asked the same question. Personnel responded with, to destroy Arcadia. SCP-721 responded by producing sounds similar to hushed crying, at which point, the game spontaneously crashed. Any future mentions of GOI-78 produced extra health for SCP-721, along with an automated voice saying, Thank you for your kindness, and was used as the primary way to regenerate. However, repeated mentions appeared to cause SCP-721 emotional distress. Log 2 When SCP-720 was restarted, personnel found SCP-721 to no longer be the playable character. Instead, personnel played as Timothy Werner, a small boy with a balloon. The only level present in the game was the scene, which took place inside an environment that appeared to be inside an arcade. Timothy had little combat ability. Instead, gameplay primarily focused on using his balloon to fly over and escape skeletal entities. All enemies appear to be skeletal or spectral in nature. However, there were approximately 40 total in three different groups compared to other worlds having nearly 100 spread out amongst the level. This is theorized to be due to the level's small size. The end of the level has no boss fight or puzzle. Instead, a rudimentary cutscene is triggered as Timothy removes a quarter from his pocket to place it in the machine, which appears similar to Dance Dance Revolution's cabinet. Timothy begins to run on the machine's pads before laughter can be heard. The screen goes black. When the scene returns, a lump is present on the floor, presumably a dead Timothy, as it appeared similar to his death scenes when touched by an enemy in the level. A spectral form of Timothy can be seen being pulled into the machine. This form lacks legs. After this, personnel were able to control SCP-721 again in the level Hometown, before SCP-721 could move, another text box appeared, asking the same question. Personnel were physically unable to type a reply. After 30 seconds of waiting, Go Faster appeared in the response box. The text box closed, and a small flame could be seen above SCP-721. This flame was theorized to correspond to a new meter present at the top of the screen, the Absolution which decreased in value each time a new pair of legs or beanie was equipped. This meter did not replenish in between worlds. SCP-721 progressed through the level, eventually defeating a GR-33D final boss by equipping a new pair of legs, decreasing the absolution meter, causing the boss to dissipate. SCP-721 continued towards the next level, juxtaposition. In this level, SCP-721 entered the roller rink, present in the background of the previous world. This level was neither present in previous playthroughs, nor did it contain any enemies or hazards. Instead, SCP-721 was presented with a choice at the end of the level, a doorway which, when entered, would continue on to the next level, or the ability to sniff a small white pile next to a large hole out of which laughter could be heard. The repercussions of this choice are unknown. Personnel selected the doorway before saving. Log 3 The next world, Graveyard, was similar to the previous level in that it contained no enemies. However, this level was present in the original game. SCP-721 was directed by personnel to continue forwards into the level's entrance, appearing similar to a graveyard or crypt. SCP-721 refused, upon which a small cutscene played, with SCP-721 turning towards the screen. Upon the cutscene finishing, SCP-721 was successfully directed to continue. 
The level was presented as a series of small vignettes, with SCP-721 looking at multiple tombstones and reading epitaphs written upon them. The only legible one had ripped from us by the angel's dust written upon it. SCP-721 continuing through the graveyard towards its exit resulted in the triggering of another cutscene. During this cutscene, SCP-721 can be seen in an office cubicle before the viewpoint quickly switches to a first-person view, presumably from SCP-721's perspective. SCP-721 types away at their computer until a heavily disfigured man taps SCP-721 on the shoulder. This man's username is NB, as displayed in white text over their head. NB has no facial structure, its features replaced with a crude rendition of the Arcadia A logo, flipped upside down. SCP-721's point of view shakes, as NB requests SCP-721 to follow him. SCP-721 does so, and the environment shifts to a large packaging center, in the middle of which is a large circle. This circle is drawn with red liquid, and a distinct smell of sulfur and bleach is emitted from the laptop's audio ports. A large amorphous being, entirely colored of red pixels, descends from above, as SCP-721 can be heard screaming. Hooded figures surround SCP-721, who looks down at his hands. They are human hands, and SCP-721 has no legs. The large red figure grows large bone-like structures from its ribcage, which develop into hands, legs, and crosses. It makes no sound as it continues towards SCP-721, lifting it up with these structures and throwing SCP-721 out of a nearby window. SCP-721 is shown in a home environment, sitting at a desk, shaking as a child, appearing similar to Timothy Werner is cowering in the far right corner. As SCP-721 shakes, NB reappears in a doorway, consuming the child. A final boss health bar appears over its head, declaring it Lucifer, suggesting NB is the new final boss. A large amorphous red entity erupts out of the back of NB as it continues forward, and the two communicate. This communication appears unscripted, as filler words are present in SCP-721's responses. SCP-721 Be gone. Be gone. Go. NB You have come to atone. Atone you shall. SCP-721 I have not come to atone. I have come to destroy and avenge. NB There will be none of that, Thomas. My sincerest apologies. SCP-721 Take your cocaine and shove it up your I shall release wrath from my heart of hearts. And be bold. But you are too bold, Thomas. SCP-721 You, uh, you are nothing but a worm. I will strike you down. And be Thomas, I am no worm. But there is one here, Thomas. You. Thomas, where are they, Thomas? Where are they? I can hear them burning up, Thomas. With each thing you put on. SCP-721. Be gone, demon. There is no worm here. Be gone. NB. You are the worm, Thomas. Does the one who controls you not realize where your legs are from? SCP-721 Judge me not on the sins I have committed in my journey in this place, but I repent nevertheless. I repent and banish thee. Be gone, be gone. I banish thee, for I have attained light. Be gone, foul demon of Arcadia. NB There will be none of that. I am not sorry. NB moves towards an immobile SCP-721. The temperature of the laptop running SCP-720 began to increase to nearly 204 degrees Celsius, causing severe overheating in nearby personnel. The following audio file played on repeat for approximately five minutes, 
despite the disk drive having stopped spinning due to repeated use. Testing was aborted, and SCP-720 was removed from the laptop's disk drive. Following new safety measures, including remote operation of SCP-720 and temperature failsafes, SCP-720 was reapproved for secure testing approximately four months later. SCP-720 could not be played upon starting SCP-720. Repeatedly attempting to start up SCP-720 resulted in the spontaneous manifestation of basalt, granite, and sulfur in a two-meter radius around the laptop running SCP-720, as well as a brief spike in Tartari and resonant energy in Site-28's area. The status of SCP-721 is currently being determined. Further testing has been abandoned. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-719, Lightbringer, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.